Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you the second method for solving systems using matrices. In a previous video, I showed how to do it by way of matrix equations, but in this video, I'm going to show you by matrix row reduction. Everyone's favorite, right? Well, it's mine anyway. So what I'm going to do is write by matrix row reduction. And this is how it goes. You're going to take a matrix, let's say A, B, C, D, by the way the A, B, C, D are the coefficients of the variables in your system of equations. X and Y are going to be the solutions for X and for Y. And your goal is to augment this matrix and turn it into what we call the identity matrix. So if you can change these values A, B, C, D into the values 1, 0, 0, 1, then you'll know what your X and your Y values are that make that system true. So I'm going to start with this example right here. If I have the system negative 2, sorry, negative X plus 5y equals 15 and 2x plus 3y equals 9 and I intend to solve by matrix row reduction what I first have to do is change my matrix or change my system into this format so what would it look like it would look like this negative 1 just the coefficients 5 2 and 3 draw a bar then not x and y, we're going to put 15 and 9. These are my, those are my constants in the um, system. And then what I said is we're going to change by changing our rows, we're going to morph this, this matrix right here into the identity matrix. Now, your game plan is to get the ones or get a one somewhere very quickly. And for obvious reasons, we have a 1 in the row 1, column 1, or a negative 1, rather. It would be really easy to make it a positive 1 just by dividing the entire first row by negative 1, or multiplying by negative 1. So that's how I'm going to write. On top of this arrow, I always give my instruction for what my plan is to change this matrix, or this matrix into the next one. So I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 1. So I'm going to write the opposite of row 1. Here it comes. So row 1 was negative 1, 5, 15. It's now going to be 1, negative 5, negative 15. Now all I had intended to change was row 1, so that's all I'm changing. Row 2 is going to stay the same. All right, I got a 1 in a spot. That's awesome. My next goal is to get the 0 right below it. So I need to change that 2 into a 0. How I do it is through a series of matrix or row operations. Um, one of which I can do is multiply. I can multiply a row by a constant. I can um, add rows together. I can multiply and add. I can switch rows. In this case, what I'm going to try to do is add a negative 2 to a positive 2 to zero it out. So to make that happen, I'm going to take my first row, multiply it by negative 2, and then add it to the second row. Watch what happens. Kind of a rule of thumb, something you should know is whatever you do or whatever you say you're going to do to the matrix to turn it into the new one, the only row that changes is the second one. So I'm using row 1 to change row 2. This is how it's going to work. Watch carefully. Row 1 is not changing. Row 2 is. How is it changing? Well, I'm multiplying negative 2 times 1 and then adding it to row 2. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That's what I wanted to have happen. Of course, these other numbers are going to change, but just go with it. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. 10 plus 3, 13. Then negative 2 times negative 15 is 30. 30 plus 9 is 39. Okay, we're on our way to get that identity matrix. So 
So I'm going to draw an arrow that shows I'm continuing this process. Don't have any more room on my paper, so I'll bring my arrow over here. What's my next plan? Well, I have a 1, I have a 0. According to the way this is morphing out, I need a 1 right there. If you're lucky, the entire row is divisible by that number. And isn't 13 or 39 divisible by 13? The answer is yes. So since it's divisible, my plan is to kind of divide that row by 13, but you don't really divide. You always multiply a row by a constant. So I'm going to multiply by 1 13th. I'm essentially taking 1 13th of row 2. Not doing anything to row 1, so row 1 stays the same. 1, negative 5, negative 15, and I'm changing only row 2 in this way. 1 13th of 0 is 0. I wanted to use my orange pen. 0. 1 13th of 13, in other words, 13 divided by 13 is 1. 1 13th of 39, or 39 divided by 13 is 3. Okay, hopefully you can see I'm well on my way. One step to go. What do I need next? I need my 0 above the 1. So I need that negative 5 to become a 0. Do you remember how we did it last time? Because I'm going to use that same game plan. If I could possibly add a positive 5 to a negative 5, that would give me a 0 right here. So what I'm going to do is create a positive 5 by multiplying row 2 by a 5 and then adding it to row 1. Here it comes. Row 1 is the only one changing. Row 2 stays like it is. I kind of like it the way it is. I've got my 0 and my 1. Row 1 is the one that's changing. How? 5 times row 2 added to the previous row 1. So 5 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Good thing, so I needed to keep that 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 plus negative 5 is 0. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus negative 15 is 0. I've got my answer right in front of me. I can see that since 1 is, um, I mean I've got a 1 in that first row, first column, that tells me that x equals 0. The 1 in the second row, second column, tells me y equals 3. How do we write our answers for systems of equations as ordered pairs? So the ordered pair 0 comma 3 is the solution. Now what you should do to check your work, make sure you're right, is test your solution. I'm going to insert 0 for x, 3 for y, and see if I get 15 in the top equation. Negative 0, that's 0. 5 times 3 is 15. Yes, 15 equals 15. But for it to be a solution for a system, it has to be a solution for both equations. So now I'm going to test these values in for this equation. 2 times 0 is 0. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 equals 9. Therefore, it works. Done.